I have a Dell PowerConnect 2724, and basically what I'm planning to do with it is the fan in here is really loud. <laughs> I guess it's designed for a server application where loudness doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the fan on the inside to a quieter one, and I'm going to add in a fan duct in case there are any negative effects to removing this fan so that at least the main component the central bridge in this system is going to work. Nothing too fancy here, just a castle. Focus. I wish I could do a time lapse of this, but this is the only camera I have. Okay, first layer's got done. Done. <laughs> time for me to do something else. You know, I said I was gonna do something else, but instead I'm here eating me a burger. Uh, the printer is still working in the background. You can hear it. I'm just going through this board. Here's the main chip. You can see a bunch of differential traces. <coughs> Differentially signaled electricity. <coughs> this electricity just goes and communicates to the different chips on this board. If you look in the front, what I've seemed to notice is there are one, two, three, four, five, six banks of Ethernet jacks, and that corresponds to one, two, three, four, five, possibly here's the sixth bank of Ethernet jacks. Along with that, we have six magnetics that connect to these banks. Now, Ethernet is also a differentially signaled thing, but with that, there's a little caveat instead of your regular differentially signaled stuff. It has to be magnetically isolated. So there aren't any ground loops or anything weird like that. Along with these uh, Ethernet ports, there are also these two SFP ports. These are supposed to be combo ports with uh, this one to this one and this one to this one, I think. So basically you either use the SFP stuff which is only a gigabit, or you use the ports, which are also a gigabit. And another thing you'll probably notice is the delta power supply. That is delta as in the same delta that makes weird fans that go really, really fast. Mains in 5 volts, 8 amps. So yeah, you really need to double up on your wires if you're outputting 5 volts directly onto the board. It's really weird that they would do that. I'd imagine that they'd want a higher voltage on this side, so like they could save up on their copper bulk when they're actually connecting up to the board and just provide a, a buck converter or something on this side. It seems like there's already one here, so... Maybe this is okay, you know? Maybe this saves you that one or two cents that adding a buck converter on this side would eliminate from your budget. I don't know. It, it's interesting to talk about. What do you know? Focus. Fo focus. Focus. There we go. I was just out of range. Well, what do you know? The fan's also a delta. I might believe one of those wives' tales where if you put two components in the same system of a different brand, and, and the brands are direct competitors of each other, that maybe they won't like each other too much. 
and one will go out faster than the other. But it's just an old wives' tale, so I wouldn't give it much credit. Do I need to make a blood sacrifice to get a focus? So the funny thing about these screws is the fact that they're self-threading, plasticky, plastic thread screws. And that just gives me a hard time. How do you start them straight in plastic? Do you just turn it a half turn and then knock it around until you think it's straight and then keep going down with the whole thing? Please leave something in the comments to tell me how to do this. I'm genuinely curious. Good focus. Focus, 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 focus. Is that focused on the print? I don't even know. This is going to be a long night. It's about uh, 11.45, so I think I want to call it a night. In fact, the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I might replace the fan in this thing. That guy up there. This is just really, really bad. It's loud. It's too loud. <laughs> now, my friend Polly Square says that we should mount this thing in using a bit of exterior 3M mounting tape. This attaches a little tightly in here. Sure, it might be okay, but uh, it's negligence on the part of my friend. With the mounting tape, full things. Just you know, goes in there. I don't know. I get the feeling that if you really put the time into this, you could tie it in with some uh, screws. You know, just the normal way. I don't know. I am the kind of person who wants to make this myself, you know. Let's just do that. Just make it ourselves. We'll call it a remix on Thingiverse. That's focused, right? Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, we can just kind of copy his dimensions, or come up with our own. And that will kind of work for us. There are a few spots that the print can do a little touch-up. Obviously, it's recommended that it's laid flat. And the printer does all the work like this, right? But the software that I'm using, Slicer, can't really do that. So, I was kind of forced to just print it as is, like this. And then the printer does all the work. And from there on up. So I can probably fix that with the part design. Let me get my uh, ruler and we'll really measure this thing, see how it's going. And if you don't know me, I'm a bit of a metric fanboy, so just hold on. Now we do see that one of the things that Polysquare has done is uh, he's made a fillet on the inside edge right there. That might be a little against my ideals. Ideally, we'd do an undercut there, so that the fan can fit in better. This is just the, the old fan, though. Uh, right, because fans have relatively sharp corners, compared to the 3D print, which is kind of have a mushy corner and whatnot. It's far where you can go with these designs. Um, I probably do have mounting tape somewhere in my house, but I'm not going to use it. Because screw that. If it can fit with a bunch of screws, I'm going to fit it with a bunch of screws. I'm that kind of guy. It's worth mentioning that uh, 3D print dimensions really aren't reliable unless you're getting a reliable 3D print. So, something kind of chattery like this, which was caused by me not printing it right, um, would definitely not yield a good dimension. It wouldn't be accurate. It depends on your printer too. Um, with the consoles and whatnot, it probably is about 0.2 for a um, for kind of an interference fit. But uh, for the you know the the rectangular style printers, I'd probably go to 0.1. Once again, it depends on your printer, so a lot of the 3D prints that you'll see online are made for more accurate printers or more inaccurate printers. 
the good guys will probably try to make it to whatever the most inaccurate printer they can think of, you know. That's, <laughs> that's still not crappy. You know, I thought about this some more, and this side is actually angled more so to the outside than uh, the, the inner side. So, if I just get some of my basic tools here, it's a little bit under, uh, over 45 degrees. I'd put it at a, I'd say, 49, 48 degrees. And this side is uh, about 37-ish degrees. So if we really want to make this right, we're going to have to get those degrees fixed. Maybe make this, to make this guy a little shallower. Anyway, we'll fix this on screen with Inventor. So I just took the, the Dremel and made that pit right there. It used to be kind of like that. So the, the cable wouldn't go through that. So I just made that pit. And that solves my problem. Or at least part of it. The other part, you know, requires a little more work.